All right. Thank you for coming. So we are going to have Charles. Charles. We are going to have Charles continue on the cotangent complex of the bond later. Okay. So let me move to simplicial stacks and so on. So I have left off something from last time. Last time, what what I did was. We looked at the category of simplicial commutative rings. We defined cotangent modules or sheaf of different rings over the top of the given by simplicial commutative rings. And then we defined the notion of cotangent complex of a ring with cotangent. And the relative cotangent complex for a morphism of simplicial commutative rings. So I think we all I think we can agree that we know what a simplicial commutative ring is now. So I want to talk about tiny bit like morphisms of these rings and so on, but let me tell you something, a remark from last time. Remark. So, so I should start from here. Ryan told me we should make sure we can see the um, So, remark is the following. A simplicial A commutative ring, commutative ring a dot. So whenever I put I put simplicial, I put a dot there. If I didn't, remind me, because I think this is better presentation anyway. Simplicial commutative ring a dot is called and truncated and truncated if the higher homotopy groups of a dot vanish for all i bigger than n. So similar to before, um, the inclusion, the inclusion function, function of the full subcategory of the full subcategory and homotopy category of simplicial commutative rings truncated above between n n truncated which is the of of this root of n truncated n truncated uh, simplicial commutative rings as a Left adjoint, as a left adjoint, which is the truncation functor, sends you from homotopy category of simplicial commutative rings to homotopy category of truncated simplicial commutative rings. You have simplicial rings, you have truncations of simplicial rings. It means that take the simplicial ring, the truncation is the one that higher homotopy groups beyond some degree vanish. Then you have homotopy, homotopy category of simplicial commutative rings. It means that modules in here, or even rings in here, are replaced by their fibrant models. What does the fibrant model mean? Yes, it is the cat it's the categorical notion of resolution. So in this category, objects are not just rings, but they are replaced by their resolutions in here. And the resolutions are also given by modules over the simplicial groups. And so, because you can truncate the rings, you can truncate the resolutions in here. Okay, is that tau? Mm -hmm. Is that a tau? Tau. Tau. Truncation. So, for any, for any, Ring in, in this homotopy for any object in this homotopy category, we have a we have something called we have something called Kosnikov Kosnikov tower. Kosnikov tower. It is not something that we haven't seen before. It's the tower of truncations, basically, which is the following. Have the ring, and you keep uh, 
truncated further and further. And it keeps going like that. Eventually, you have the last bit and last one is by definition equal to pi zero of a dot. There's nothing below that. Think about the non-negative drive step degree, concentrated and positive degree. How many truncations of it can you have if you can go all the way to H0, for instance, and nothing less? You cannot go to H minus 1 because it starts vanishing. Simplicial thing is also it's not positive degree, so you can go all the way to degree zero. Yeah. It can be proved that this is a remark. I'm not going to spend so much time on, on this. It's just a remark, maybe for the sake of the can be can be proved that um, there is, for any n bigger than zero, there exists a homotopy diagram, homotopy homotopy pullback pullback square. less than n minus 1 on a dot, and it goes to location less than n minus 1 on a dot, goes to tau n minus 1 of a dot, wraps on pi n of a, should be pi n minus 1, uh, pi n of a at n plus 1 would be, I will tell you what that is. This is the homotopy pullback diagram. We know what homotopy pullback is, right? I will, I will tell you. I just remind you from topology. So, but let me explain this maps in this diagram. It's just a remark. I'm not going to use it directly anytime soon. So. And first of all, where n i and a n plus one is the simplicial simplicial um, a module a dot module a dot module, uh, which is really the def definition is defined as s n plus one. Answer with pi n of a dot. It is the n plus, n plus one full suspension of this thing in this circle. The idea that is um, n plus one suspension. We know what the suspension is of pi n of a. And remember that pi n of a, we know what uh, a dot is. We know what this is. The homotopy groups are re realized by morphisms in this category from circle. Looped, looped, just looped spaces, right? Looped maps. So pi n of a is a morphism from Sn to a dot. And we know the we have discussed what is the group structure of the fundamental groups or higher groups. We know that we can multiply them, we can join them. Structure, and so this is the suspension of the pi n. Okay, n plus one sus suspension. Zero here stands for for O. It stands for for the trivial derivation and K n is. And in this drive derivation, drive derivation with values in I and of A dot n plus one in this 
suspension, L plus one suspension of the two and follow it. So it's a, it's a relation, it's basically a certain symmetric diagram we will be using very little later, which relates the different truncations of a given symmetry geometry to different parameters. Okay. Yeah, I think this is enough for Let's move on. Okay, so now we are in the category of simplicial complete rings. We have the morphisms of rings. The same way that in regular algebraic geometry, we discuss about the commutative rings, then we construct the schemes on them, we discuss about morphisms between rings, and some of the properties of the morphisms between rings extend to the properties of the schemes that live on these rings. For instance, finite type morphisms. You can translate that into the morphism of the underlying ring, defining two, uh, you know, two schemes. Or atoll morphisms between schemes. You can translate that to a, to a statement about the underlying ring. So, so this is the, well, what we are trying to do. So flat, um, smooth, and uh, atoll morphisms. In simplicial commutative category. Definition um, that F from A to B be a or A dot to B dot be a morphism of simplicial the morphism of simplicial. Show rings. We know what that means. Each one of these rings are simplicial chains. A1, A2, A3, and then if you have the simplicial tower like this, and you have the simplicial tower like this, and then you have the morphism, and then you know, everything is compatible. Just so that you know what we are doing. Okay, commutative the rings. So now, one, the morphism. F is homotopically homotopically of finite presentation. This is an expression homotopically of finite presentation. And for any for any um, filtered system of commutative simplicial uh, A algebra, A dot algebras. I should give that a name. So my schools, uh, that would be dot alpha. These are A dot algebras. And for any system of A dot algebras like that, the natural morphism natural morphism for limit uh, mm, R homes from a C alpha dot to B dot which can be mapped to R hom um, over R hom over A A dot A, um, A dot morphisms over the simplicial complete category of co-limit of this C dot alpha to B dot is an equal So, you know, uh, the, the taking the R harm commute, the taking the co-limits. That's a simplified way of saying it. 
taking the call limit, taking the undisturbed graded filtered system. R harm, when we say R harm, it means that, well, either you can work with this one or you can work with this one. You need to, given a ring in the simplicity uh, you know, category, you replace it with this resolution. That's the R harm. That's what R harm is. You replace one of these things with the fibrant or cofibrant, exactly like when we do Fourier regimes. You want to take the R harm between two sheets. What do you do? You replace either this one with a projective resolution or an injective resolution. Fibrant, cofiber, and you calculate, right? This is exactly the same. And then, as soon as you replace one of these guys with the resolution, with the simplicial resolution of it, this R harm can be calculated using the inner harm, which we defined last time. I called it harm dot or harm with an underline. We define this thing guys. Two. Morphism F is, this is important, so the morphism F is flat if mm, the base change, base change uh, functor, what was the base change functor? It was something blank, base changing, left right functor with this B dot and it was taking view from the homotopy category of simplicial A dot modules to the homotopy category of simplicial B dot modules. Remember, right? If I put something like this got to be it got to be an A dot module and as soon as I answer it I will get the B dot module. Function. And that's the uh, the base change function. So this thing, this morphism between a dot and b dot, between these rings, is flat. If this thing commutes with commutes with homotopy. Remember homotopy tool guys? So, for instance, maybe reminder, right? Remember, remember homotopy tool guys in reminder from I mean, topology, from topology. What was the homotopy tool guy? Let's say in the category of topological spaces, you have some object there, an actual topological space, and so you would have maps from A and B, something like that. Then you could define, let's say f and g. Then you could define some object which you would call the homotopy pullback of this diagram. You would write it like a times b over z, and you put an h in here, homotopy pullback. And what would that be? This thing, the homotopy pullback was kind of a times mm -hmm. z. I, um, I being the unit, uh, you know, unit interval, times B over Z, something like that. It was defined as this thing. It was the set of elements A and um, some kind of, this is, this ZI is the space of paths from, you know, paths in Z. So it's the set of elements A and gamma, which is in ZI, and Bs, such that somehow gamma of zero, I want the gamma of zero to be F of element A, F of A, and I want gamma of um, one to be G, G of B. That, this was the description of all of And this guy was kind of diagrams like this, and it came with these projection maps, projection on the B and the projection on the A. 
and we, we, we needed this diagram, needed this to be um, like commuting, commuting up to homotopy. This is what the homotopy thing back is. And then if you have another homotopy pullback for this thing, rather another object in here, W, that satisfies these properties, we have this universal property that needed to be satisfied that we can map from here to the two top diagram. Okay. Homotopy pullback. So such a thing needs to commute with phase change. Okay. Now take two maps to the dot, and you can find the pullback, put the dot in here, find the homotopy pullback, and then phase change with respect to this function. You want this function to be compatible with the homotopy pullback via a diagram like that. Always in the homotopy pullback, the, the, the starting point is a diagram like that. Okay. So at all. Formally a tall if the cotangent complex which I defined last time, the relative cotangent complex which I defined last time, is what? Can you tell me? Think about arch form. Think about whatever EGA or arch or whatever you learned out of the exam. What's an a tall normal? Excellent. Hmm? Excellent zero. Atomorphism is the one that induces isomorphism in the level of tangent spaces or the cotangent spaces. If they are equivalent to each other, then the cone between them, the, you know, the relative cotangent complex, is zero. And this L dot we defined last time. Okay. So four. Atomorphism. Morphism F is formally formally smooth. Formally smooth if for any simplicial B dot module, let's call it M dot, simplicial B dot module M dot with I zero of M dot. Um, equal to zero, we have we have um, a map, homotopy map between this cotangent relative cotangent complex to M dot such formally the smooth. Formally the smooth. Try to make sense of that and compare it to chapter 7 of function. Oh, does that mean? 2.7 of function, sorry. Does that mean the uh, cotangent complex is zero in my favor? Yeah, formally. That's right. Because it's not zero. Yeah. This one is. This one doesn't have any, uh, any higher, higher, higher homotopy groups. So, yes, there's a homotopy map between this and something which doesn't have homotopy. Formally Of finite 
representation. If is a tall morphism, if it is, if it is formally a tall, uh, right? Formally a tall and homotopically. One last thing, seven, in the morphism, F is, uh, is a Zariski open inversion of superficial rings, superficial rings, if it is flat, now we know what flat is, this base change commutes with the homotopy pullback. And uh, if this flat homotopically of finite presentation, you okay and Natural morphism natural morphism E dot tensor over A dot E dot to B dot okay. is an equivalence. Remember that everything you're writing in here is simplicial commutative ring. You want to identify them with each other. All the identifications are the weak equivalences. Right. So these notions that we will use later are related to each other. The summa of Zariski open Immersion is uh, is atoll, for instance. An atoll morphism an atoll morphism is a smooth. Makes sense, right? This is what we remember from our break. Atoll morphism is a smooth and a and a smooth morphism. Not every flat morphism is smooth. Not every smooth morphism is a tall. It didn't make sense. It rhymes with regular algebraic. A tall in regular algebraic geometry was a smooth morphism of relative dimension zero. Right? So these are the underlying ingredients to define scheme theory and the stack theory over the category of simplicial commutative rings. We are literally doing the same thing as we did before in algebraic geometry. We first talk about rings and then we construct the spaces on them. Oh, so let me summarize this, especially that Alex, right? Yeah. So Alex here was in the he was asking me kind of about overall explanation, so I added this one. So let's summarize what we have done so far. There have been many abstract notions around, and let's summarize. What have we done so far? So what have we done so far? So 
So first we discussed model category. Model category of simplicial tree sheets over an abstract category. Abstract category. We discussed tree sheets over a category, and we gave those set of tree sheets a model structure, model category structure. Okay. Um, so, what was these sheets? We had an underlying category. See, we always it's like algebraic geometry, regular algebraic geometry. What do we do? Every scheme is given by, defined by a tree sheet taking values in rings, right? The tree sheet is a contravariant function from category of topological spaces to the category of rings or abelian groups, right? We are doing the same thing. We need a functor that takes objects in some category, for instance, topological spaces, to, in this case, it was simplicial sets. Because we want topology, on a given category, we need to put some topology on it. And we did, using broken deep topology. So we put some sites there. So we have some abstract category. We look at the pre sheaf of simplicial sets over that abstract category. Then we equipped this thing with a topology. We had this notion of hypercovers and so on. And we showed that if the pre sheaf is defined this way, the simplicial sets as the fibers satisfies nice gluing conditions, which was basically pull back of the things via hyper covers, via compatible charts, then it would be a sheet, right? So from this sheet, everything was also up to homotopy coherence. So this sheet itself was an element of homotopy category of simplicial equations. So from this, we defined, defined notions of notions of stacks, stacks, and the schemes. Also, n stacks and the schemes, n stacks and truncations, truncations of higher stacks over this category C. So we had a sheaf F. It was a pre-sheaf. It was an element of simplicial category of simplicial pre-sheaves over some category C. Then we said, well, this thing needs to satisfy gluing condition and it needs to satisfy a certain model structure. So when we realized we wanted to realize this not by just the sheaf itself, but the fiber and model of that sheaf. So we lifted things up, up, up to homotopy category of these things. So this itself could have a resolution, simply show resolution. And then we said, okay, how did we define it? For every object in here, X and C, we had a silly mapping the space. So this sheaf taking values and simplicial sets had a silly definition. So F of X was something like palm to X, or something like that. But it could be given as a simplicial set. Okay, so we had something like that. And then we called it a scheme. If the fiber and model of this thing, the resolution of this thing, is just the sheet itself, we call it a scheme. But also it could be having higher length resolution, and that would give us one stacks, two stacks, and so on and so forth. So and we knew that we can truncate these stacks and so on. So if we wanted to just naively make sense of these things, you have an underlying category, you have this sheet. If it is just a scheme, it understands certain points. Think about growth and this idea that points in the space are given as a functor from spectrum of some ring Z in your space. So points are given as functors from taking elements in here 
Then the one stack would be thing that understands nothing of the point, but also automorphisms of the inputs. And higher and higher stacks are automorphisms of automorphisms that are independent of automorphisms, so on and so forth. Okay? And we made some examples in here. Bond G was one example, a stack of you know, modular stack of curves of given genus was one example. These are one stacks. Okay? So we have the abstract notion of a stack and a scheme. And then he said, well, this is too abstract. Let's geometrize, specialize the geometry of it. So to define algebraic stacks, what did we do? We, we specialized to C being category of commutative rings. Those are the same schemes that we define over there, and the stacks that we define over it, they were called the algebraic stack or n stack or algebraic schemes. More geometric. Thus, commutative rings are given by functions that satisfy algebraic equations. So now it's not just category. Okay, then what we, did we do? We said, okay, we would like to extend the base of this functor, this tree sheet of simplicial sets itself has fibers given by simplicial sets, but we would like to also extend the base of it. So then what did we do? We went to simplicial commutative rings, right? So then, then mm, we defined simplicial commutative rings and extend Construction to a new category which we call category of simplicial commutative rings. The geocentric topology is given by the dollar. Yes, that's right. That's completely true. Take all colors. Okay. So we are, we are so far here. I haven't give you, given you the stacks or the schemes yet, right? I have just discussed about simplicial commutative rings, morphisms between them, cotangent complex of rings, and so on. Now I need to tell you, I have this functor, and it's fibered over this category. It spits out for me simplicial sets for any given simplicial commutative ring or a space that is defined on it. So let's continue. So now these are the derived stacks. So, so I'm okay. Also defined the notion of notions of flat, smooth, et al. Morphisms. Just to summarize, in this simplicial primitive example, this is where we are. So now let's go to drive the stacks. Drive the stacks. Drive the stacks. And drive algebraic stacks. So these we would like to define as objects like before in the homotopy category of the Simplicial pre sheets, this time over the category of simplicial commuted ring. Okay. okay, so let's do that. Um, similar to before, uh, we define a notional affine space. Called the drive affine space has sim literally the opposite category of this category of simplicial category. Same way that from a commutative ring, I can go to the spectrum of that ring. From a simplicial commutative ring, I would like to define the notion of spectrum. It is endowed with a model 
category of structure, category structure of I, I, by the way, I'm not, I don't remember, maybe I was not putting up over line zero, or maybe I was putting, I really need to think that we have to do the category of centrifugal principle. Okay. Yeah. The opposite category, whose objects are the same as objects in the centrifugal in two rings, but morphisms are the opposite morphisms, we call it derived by category. Object in this category mm -hmm. corresponding to a dot in the category of simplicial primitive rings is formally formally denoted by denoted by spectrum. Not, not so surprising, I think. Which is the one we will be using, another notion of a spec, which is R spec. But you know, I will tell you what is R spec, don't worry. Okay? It's just R spec of a ring is the spectrum of the simplicial resolution. So now consider exactly like before the category of simplicial three sheaves or sheaves fibers in simplicial with sections given by simplicial sets over the category of derived affine objects. Consider the Yoneda embedding, Yoneda embedding. This is just a name for the following morphism. Don't worry about what is the name Yoneda. This is the Yoneda embedding. H takes every object in here, drives affine to the simplicial three sheaves over drive affine. But what is it exactly like how we define these, these pre sheaves that give us stacks and so on as a mapping the space? It takes you, it takes some x in here, takes takes that to h of x defined by the mapping the space hall blank to x. This is the very essentially the thing that gives you schemes, the stacks, everything. Well, cons 
than a simple direction. Um, constant and simple initial direction. What does it mean? Well, you know, it's a sheath that I can understand what this sheath does for every object in the category of derived affine object. So what it does is that h of x takes x to hum to x. But you know, we are saying that this functor is a functor taking values in simplicial sets. What does it mean? Well, it means that I really need to think about this set as a simplicial set. It's a set, isn't it? It's a set. I need to really think of it as a simplicial set. So as soon as you give me some object, some y, in this category of derived affines, then I can make sense of fiber of this thing over that y. It's defined for an object x. Fiber of it over y takes me, uh, is given by h x acting on y is hum y x for every object down there. And for the category of drive affines, I can put in some topology. Okay. This is a set, but I would like to think of this set as a simplicial set. What does it mean? It means that put it like this. Put it like this, and then put it like this, and again, repeat it, keep repeating it. Simplicial set. And put these face and degeneracy maps. Right? And it keeps going like that. So this harm set, we would like to think about it as a simplicial set. That is with a dot. But the silly one, which is constant in simplicial direction. Why not take simplicial form? We will. For now, we will. Okay. So we have this and so on. So we have now this one and okay, where it was constant. Now for any equivalence, pay attention to these things. These are abstract words, but extremely important. For any equivalence, x to y, uh -huh. equivalence x to y, in this category, I can deduce, deduce <coughs> a morphism um, h of x to h of y in the simplicial pre sheath the category of simplicial pre sheaths over this category of drive affines. Well, of course, it makes sense because now our rings are simplicial objects. I can have a notion of equivalence between simplicial rings, right? And as well, I can also have a notion of equivalence between the spaces. Can have because literally the space of derived affine objects is the opposite category of the simplicial group. I can have notion of equivalence between them. We defined we defined uh, the model category the model category of three uh, three stacks. Right, affine, and I put a hat there. It's not the dual, it's just the hat. Whose objects, whose objects are the simplicial three sheaves and which are defined as drive affine. 
transpose it to some additional sets. Satisfying the following two conditions. Okay, what is happening in here? Are we just trying to abstractify things for no reason or not? No, we are not doing that. Let's go back to the set session one. We had some abstract categories. We defined the category of three sheaves, taking values in superficial sets, exactly like how, how this guy was defined. And then we said, well, it's not enough. We need to give some appropriate model category structure to this thing. So. It wasn't enough to just work with this simplicial pre sheaf category over some abstract category. We needed to lift things up to homotopy category. This is where we are going. We need to go to homotopy category somehow. So far, I have given you certain simplicial pre sheaves with simplicial sets as fibers over this plant affine category. And I would like to realize these things in the homotopy category. Those guys are going to be the stacks or the pre-stacks. So this is why pre-stack appears in here. Pre-stack. It tells you, aha. Uh -huh. So now he's trying to make it nice, vibrant, topologically. So now we can talk about this guy. But I haven't yet shown you that this x values in the homotopy category, and then it will become a non so far, three steps. So let's do it. Okay. So we satisfy two conditions. So two conditions. What are those things? One for any x in the derived affine, the simplicial. Set f of x is vibrant. Uh huh. Okay. Good idea. Two for any equivalence equivalence x to y in drive affine to induced. Morphism F Y to F of X <coughs> is an equivalence of simplicial sets. Now I I would like to emphasize again here that remark. discrepancy between derived algebraic geometry and regular algebraic geometry is exactly in this notion of equivalence. It has extra structure given by this homotopy. Okay, so remark, let's write it down. So the second um, condition uh, is called the pre-stack condition. This is uh, essential, essential, new, new feature, feature of derived stack, derived stack theory. new feature of the driver stack theory compared with um, compared with the stack theory. Why is it? 
lies in these equivalences. Because for which this condition, for which this condition does not appear, does not appear because there is no, there is no notion Notion of equivalence, equivalence, um, equivalence, of equivalence considered in this category of commutative rings. Well, except for trivial one. That is. Isomorphisms. This is the difference between derived objects and commutative, and algebraic here. Two spaces could be equivalent to each other. Two derived affine schemes could be equivalent to each other, or two derived affine steps could be equal. I mean, objects could be equivalent to each other. Because they come from some crucial conditions. Just imagine how much extra structure is there where in usual algebraic geometry is not. But I like this because even for me, the lesson I'm taking from this is that in some sense, you're constructing these spaces as geometric objects eventually, which have all of this extra information. Homotopy groups infinitesimally are like cohomology groups. We are making the spaces together with cohomological data attached to these spaces. But we are not doing regular algebraic geometry. Because in regular algebraic geometry, you construct the space. And then if you want to do cohomology, you can do cohomology on that space. Here, we're constructing some kind of sophisticated space that has in its definition intrinsically cohomological data. Later, this will be extremely useful when we do intersection theory. In algebraic geometry, as I described before, algebraic geometry, whenever you want to do intersections of two spaces, you do you collapse cohomology and homology together. Right? So you associate to the intersection of varieties a cohomology class. Here, it contained in the intersection, geometric Those are not usual spaces. These are derived spaces. So this is highly important. OK. Um, but you will see. In some sense, you might say that it seems like we are putting the same effort. It's just that in one case, we have geometry, and then we can do cohomology on it. In the other case, we embed cohomology into construct geometric construction of space. Yes, but we will see some benefits of this. They are not too far, but in some places you can see extremely critical discrepancies and advantages of doing this. Okay, now it can be it can be seen that homotopy category of this derived affine hat category is naturally. equivalent to a full subcategory to a full subcategory of homotopy category of simplicial free sheets on drive affine objects like that. This is just the homotopy category of derived affine objects that satisfy these two conditions. This thing is a full subcategory of this one. Objects in here are the pre-stacks. Objects, objects in here are just those functors. Objects in here, objects in here are just derived affine objects. There are certain objects in here. In the homotopy category, they are called pre-stacks. Of the homotopy. 
And this whole thing is a full self value of the function. So in fact, we would like to realize this is where we extend to the homotopy category. You start from some of the objects in here that satisfy extra conditions, one and two. Then we realize that homotopy category of this thing gives us what we need. If you look at the beginning of the class, we've already done this kind of thing. But over some abstraction that we want to do. So, um, consisting of all simplicial P sheets, so P sheets satisfying. Condition, the pre stack condition, which was condition two, the pre stack. Okay, the one that if you have an equivalence of underlying derived affine objects, the fiber of our functor gets mapped to the fiber of our functor over the other one, and that's an equivalence also. Those are the steps. Now, in fact, what time is it? Okay. In fact, uh, this homotopy category of derived affine hat, which gets mapped into homotopy category of simplicial prime species of derived affine objects, this, this map has a left edge. adjoint which consists of uh, sending a simplicial simplicial pushy that to its vibrant vibrant model. It's really beautiful because I remember uh, one of the really, for me at least, most interesting papers I've read is the Grothendieck's uh, paper on homological, I mean, uh, this, this paper on Tohoku journal, Toke Homology Atrophic paper, where it defines hyperprolonged That is really beautiful. It's unbelievable. He says you want to understand everything about your bundles, objects, modules defined over some scale step, whatever. You just keep resolving it. Add resolutions and resolutions and approximate this object with as possible fiber model that you can, and then look at the complexes that you get, by complexes that you get, and so on. So in some sense, this is where we are going. For me, don't, you know, people <laughs> have different reasons for appreciating something. <laughs> this is my naive reason to appreciate this. It might be very naive, but at least I have this feeling that this is really amazing. Okay, so. Someone will think it's C. <laughs> okay. Um, this has meant adjoint. Now consider. Consider the Yoneda function, Yoneda function, which defined it as H prime derived affine objects to simplicial pre sheets on derived affine objects. 
Remember that what we really mean here is that really this thing, we know that it sends us to here, actually. And this thing sits inside here as a full subcategory. And so when we say it takes us from here to here, we really mean it takes us from here to here, which is a full subcategory. But we don't distinguish between these two, as we talk about the map. OK, but we know what is going on. So if you have that, we compose we compose it with natural functor. So we have this H first. So we have H takes us from here to here. And then we can compose this thing with the natural functor. That's actually interesting. Because it's the homotopy category of this thing that lies, sits inside here. But also, this thing sits inside its own homotopy category, too. So, but anyway, it's OK. So we get a map, composite map like that. And uh, where was I? Um, now, um, so we get the map from here to there. Now by construction, by construction, this uh, sends uh, equivalences. Let's call this thing something. Uh, this map is star. Construction star sends equivalences to in, in this graph affine value to isomorphisms. The whole of the category of graph affine hat. Therefore, It induces, it induces a well-defined functor from, it's called homotopy of this Joneda functor. Homotopy of the Joneda functor, which actually sends you from homotopy of blood affine objects to Homotopy of derived affine hat. These are the three steps. Okay. And uh, now in general, result called a Yoneda uh, lemma. For model categories, the level for the model categories it states it states two properties of uh, two properties for this homotopy functor, homotopy Yoneda functor. We are not going to prove it. But we are going to, we are just going to state one property is that the functor homotopy of H, homotopy of 
W of H is fully faithful to for X, an object in this drive affine category, the object and homotopy of H applied to this X, well, where is this? This is an object in the homotopy category of derived affine checks, which itself sits inside homotopy category of simplicial pre-sheets on derived affine objects. Now we know this tower of inclusions. There's no problem. Like that. So what is the property? be the object homotopy of H of X can be described as follows. This is maybe the most important part of all of this mumbo jumbo abstract <laughs> detail. Let's see what it does, this one. How do we go from drive to affine object is a spectrum of such some simplicial commutative ring to a step or pre-step, which is an element or an object in this category. Well, this is how. So we take uh, R X R of X. model for x, which is in this drive affine. That is, i.e., if x is formally a spectrum of some simplicial primitive ring, so x is something like that, then R dot of our X is the spectrum of the Q dot of A dot where where Q dot of A dot is a cofibrant cofibrant model for A dot in this so Q dot of A dot is a simplicial resolution of A dot. Okay, no problem. So we understand, right? Then we consider um, then we consider then we consider um, the simplicial pre sheaf pre sheaf H of R dot of X, which is a which for any object in the category of derived affine objects takes one of those other things which look like the spectrum of some other ring to homomorphisms, internal homomorphisms, from Y to R of X, R dot of X. Not bad, huh? It makes sense. It's really easy. You, you spelled out everything that this function does. And now that we have replaced one of these things with the cofibrant model, we think about always think about injective projective resolutions, either fibrant or cofibrant, whether it's the covariant coordinate or the co-contravariant coordinate. It's a silly thing. 
as soon as we replace it with this, really the R hum between Y and X is the inner hum, we called it hum underline or hum dot or something, inner hum between Y and the resolution of X. What is the resolution of X? It's the spectrum of the resolution of the underlying ring of X. what this function does. We have 10 minutes. <coughs> um, the, um, then the simplicio free sheet, the simplicio free sheet over to the h of x, which I defined this way, um, is equivalent is equivalent to H of R of X. Oh, of course. This is how we define when X is equal to the spec of A. When x is like this, we also use the following notation, following notation. I'm just rewriting what is on the right blackboard. R spec, which I told you I will tell you before. I will told you before I will explain, right? So this is the explanation. R spec of a dot, by definition, is the homotopy, is the image of homotopy of H applied to X, which is equivalent to H of R dot of X. This is R dot. Resolution of the scheme, which is given by the, taking the spectrum of the resolution of this ring to find X. And this thing was the same as equivalent to inner harm homotopy category from Q of A dot to something. So, I mean, we have all the things that we want. Okay, so, so this is a uh, this is, should I say this or not? Or? No, this, this is fine. So this is, I think, enough for this part. Okay, so I hope now that you are, you agree that you are kind of very, very close to define the notion of the stack. For the category of simplicial commutative rings. We start from the simplicial, uh, uh, pre sheaf of simplicial sets whose sections are given by map spaces, hum spaces, who objects we pick in the category of schemes over this thing. Now those are the derived affine schemes. We do a pre sheaf and then it is pre sheaf and we So uh, now a family. Of morphisms from a dot to a dot i is an a tall covering a tall covering if each uh, morphism a dot a dot of i is a tall. Okay? Is a tall in this simplicial commutative category. And the family of functors and the family of 
pointers in answering over phase change functors, basically. A dot i, which sends us from homotopy category of simplicial A dot modules to homotopy category of simplicial A dot i modules. This gives us a family of phase change functors. Okay, this is a family of A dot algebras. Okay, it's conservative. So this is what defines the atoll topology on the base category with respect to which your pre-stacks will eventually become stacks. This is, this is eventually, remember that in the first session, we use the hypercovers and so on, right? To get the pre-sheets being sheets, and the pre-stacks being stacks is given by, now, let me write it down, you will see. So, so you have this thing, is, so by definition, at all topology topology on almost the category on drive affine things is the topology uh, for which mm, this is essentially what your friends just asked for which the covering seeds are the ones are the ones generated by generated by atom covering span. This is what this puts the topology on the base. And similar to before, similar to before, for any x that belongs to this category of derived affine objects, I don't want to call them derived affine schemes 